Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I read an article that really caught my attention because it fits in perfectly with the core topics of my channel. The article was that the Vice Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, who is also serving as the Federal Minister of Finance, told the newspaper Bild am Sonntag that they are currently about to change the laws that govern the rules for a tax-exempt status of German clubs and that they are planning to take this very important status away from clubs that don't want to admit women into their club. So traditional male exclusive clubs in Germany. And there are actually quite many of these clubs all over Germany and they are historically and also traditionally very, very important for our central European culture here in Germany. They are not a big part maybe, but a very important part, I think at least, of our heritage. And this tax-exempt status is actually vital for the survival and the daily operation of these clubs. Without this tax-exempt status, they are not able to survive. So I think it is justified to say that in practice, this actually corresponds to a ban of these clubs. So here we can see that both male spaces in Germany and our traditional cultural heritage are under attack by the current German government. So in this video, I actually want to present to you my current state of the research that I did on where the motivation and the legal precedent for taking away these rights from our clubs in Germany comes from. And then I want to take the opportunity to actually familiarize you a little bit about the typical clubs that we have here and where you would see men-only clubs and female-only clubs, actually. Of course, then the video will end in my usual rants. But before we go on, allow me to thank all my patrons and supporters again. And also, I would like to ask you to please like, share and subscribe or support me via PayPal, Patreon or Subscribestar. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and I want to thank you all for the interest you take in my channel and your tremendous support. Thank you. All right, here we go. So it is actually quite interesting to look into the origins of this whole affair. It was actually in the middle of 2017 when there was a German court that decided to take this tax exempt status away from a Freemasons lodge that is here in Germany. This lodge refused to accept women and therefore this um, tax exempt status was taken away from them and that is called in Germany Gemeinnützigkeit and these clubs are then called Gemeinnütziger Verein. So the word Gemeinnützig consists of two parts. The first is Gemein and comes from Allgemein and that means general, so the general public. And then the second part is Nützigkeit and that is the noun that comes from Nutzen or Nutzen and that is the benefit or the use that something has. So if I want to translate Gemeinnütziger Verein, it would be a club that serves the general public. And the court then said that in order to serve the general public, it must be open to the general public. And that means they cannot deny women admission into their lodge. Now, as a little bit of background information, tax exempt status means also that people who donate to this club also can write this off from their taxes. So they get a tax deduction for donating to these uh, charitable organizations, for example. And that is a big motivator for people to donate. So if you take away the status from these organizations, um, they will have a hard time to get any donations at all. A typical example is a club for sports or for music or for our German heritage, such as traditional uh, clothes and costumes. So these clubs have running costs for training or rehearsal sessions and for preparing events and parties, for example, that benefit the community in general, of course. Most of the coaches in these sports clubs, for example, they don't really get a salary or they're not paid a lot. Um, sometimes what they get paid is just gas money, basically. And they do this as a hobby in their free time. So if you take away the status from a club, you basically make it impossible for them to further exist. 
So this Freemason lodge probably wanted to say that historically these lodges come from the brotherhood of medieval stonemasons who provided these stones for castles, palaces and the great cathedrals of the Middle Ages. And in fact, you can even see these cool looking geometric symbols on stones when you visit German palaces, castles and cathedrals. And the origin of these mason marks is very practical and very simple. They just uh, needed to mark their stones in order to collect their payment. Because at the end of the day, you needed to know what stonemason contributed and supplied how many stones in what size and what quality to the building operation. So it was a matter of getting paid the right amount. It is kind of marking your stone with your signature. And if you have to apply this signature with hammer and chisel, of course you cannot have round organic looking symbols. You want sharp geometric shapes that you can easily apply with hammer and chisel, of course. So I do not have a lot of experience with Freemasons lodges, but um, maybe, uh, and this goes too far right now, it's a big tangent, but maybe at the end of the video I will include some bonus material where I tell you about my first-hand experiences with Freemasons. So that was back in 2017 and then this actually triggered an inquiry of the research service of the German parliament. They did some legal research and they wanted to find out what this decision of the court would actually mean in general, not only for this particular lodge, but for all clubs in Germany. And they created a document that I also linked below. And uh, here you can see some excerpts. It's in German, of course. But they clearly state that clubs or organizations that only admit men or women could lose this tax-exempt status generally in Germany. And now in 2019, Mr. Scholz from the SPD wants actually to do that. But wait, no, he doesn't want to do exactly that. Because when you read the article, and I read it in two different newspapers, Die Welt and Die Zeit, he only talks about clubs that only admit men and that reject women. He doesn't talk about clubs and organizations that are tax exempt and that are for women only, who deny entry and access and participation to men. He doesn't talk about that anymore. This, of course, doesn't come as a shock to me at all. I expected nothing else from the simpish soy boy that Mr. Schultz actually is. But nevertheless, I want to point it out here and tell you what is going on in Germany. So I talked now about clubs that we have in Germany and that they're very important. Most Germans are in a club. Many Germans are in several clubs. But what I haven't told you yet is what are the clubs that typically only accept men or that are only for women. We have both types here and I want to actually give you this background information now. And of course, for the current context here, only clubs are important that have this tax exempt status. So clubs that are traditionally for men are, for example, male choirs. And that has a technical reason. The male voice is fundamentally different from a female voice. And listeners can clearly hear what is a man's voice and what is a female voice. And these traditional men's choirs are very numerous in Germany and the arrangement of the music and also the style is distinctly different from female or mixed choirs, of course. Now in the documents I found, these clubs, the male choirs, were actually selectively covered and they said that, yeah, you must accept women into the club even though women would not sing in the club. So they could be passive members, but I'm telling you, if there is a men's choir, I don't want women in there as passive members. It is a male-only activity and they should have the right to organize their affairs as they see fit without their wives or their women coming after them and uh, monitoring and supervising them in that club. Then the other thing is riflemen's clubs, for example, and they are in some cases very, very old. And back then, women were just not uh, doing this kind of activity. So traditionally, they're also male only. And this is an important part of our heritage in Germany. 
Then women's only clubs are, for example, the Landfrauen. This is the type of women's clubs that you have in rural areas, for example. And they also deal with traditional cooking, with uh, decorating the village square and also traditional clothes and crafts, for example. If you Google for Landfrauen or Frauenverein, for example, you will find many, many pictures and many websites of these women's clubs. And actually, I have no problem with them whatsoever. More power to them. I fully support that. And I also don't want any men to try and infiltrate these purely female clubs. And based on these examples, let me tell you something about the perversion and the corruption of our German law by misuse of language. And this is what German uh, law scholars and uh, courts and judges are actually actively doing in order to destroy our societies. They say, and they argue with our German constitution, that in order to have this tax-exempt status, you must serve the public. And that entails also that you're open to everybody equally. But that is a pile of BS, if you ask me. Of course, these clubs can be to the benefit of the general public, even though they only accept men or women. Just think about it. If these ladies clubs, for example, if they decorate the village square, it is to the benefit of everybody who can enjoy this nicely decorated well around Easter time, for example. That is a traditional, uh, mostly Catholic tradition that you see. There is a well in the middle of the village. And uh, they normally decorate that. And it looks nice for everyone. It doesn't matter if it was only women who decorated that. And also the male choir, for example. When there is a village festival or in church or something, and they work on a repertoire of nice songs, and they sing these songs in public for everybody, then everybody who has ears can enjoy these wonderful songs. And it doesn't matter if it's only men who sing these songs. The benefit is not... Uh, the status of being in that club, the benefit is what the club does for the community. So the property of a club to be a benefit to the general public, to serve the general public, has nothing to do, in my opinion, and it is pretty clear, I think, it has nothing to do with whether or not they admit everybody equally. And I also don't think that you need a proper justification. It might be just tradition or maybe just for the fun of it. Maybe women want a female-only space and maybe men just want a male-only space. What's the problem? The problem is, of course, that the powers that be cannot allow that because they know that male-only spaces could be dangerous in the current political climate. And make no mistake, if you think that the phenomenon of hatred against men and boys and the attack of globalist elites on our organically grown European traditions and our culture here are two completely separate issues, you have another thing coming. You are mistaken. At least they are two fronts in one of the same conflict. And if you really ask me, I think it's in the end one and the same thing. Because the destruction of masculinity in the West is a prerequisite, is a necessary precondition for the destruction of our culture, our identity, and in the end, for the biological destruction of our people here in Europe. How do you think male feminists and soy boys like Mr. Scholz were created in the first place? How do you think a society came to be that tolerates Ursula von der Leyen as head of the European Commission or Angela Merkel as Chancellor of Germany or Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer as the chairman of the CDU and the secretary for defense of Germany? How do you think all that stuff comes to pass? huh? Why do you think people are not up in arms about this? Because for decades now, masculinity was systematically under attack and our boys are not treated right in school and in society at large. And this is a small example, but it is a very useful and very important example where you can see that the attack on male spaces and the attack of our age-old traditions are basically one and the same thing. In fact, it is the same law that they change that actually 
targets both areas at the same time. All right, so this is basically what I wanted to say about this for today. Let me know down in the comments below what is the situation in your country when it comes to male or female only clubs or maybe also the legal or financial situation like tax exempt status for these clubs and just let me know what you think about that. So I hope you had a great weekend and get into the next week well, be safe wherever you are. Servus Kameraden! Okay, anecdote time, little bonus. So I was 17 or 18 years old when a friend from school had actually her 16th birthday party. And um, I didn't know until the evening that I arrived there that the location where this party was taking place was actually the Freemasons Lodge of the city where I grew up at. And until that point, I didn't even know that we have a Freemasons Lodge. I actually didn't really know what the Freemasons were. I think I only knew that Simpsons episode that uh, makes fun of these uh, secret societies with the stonemasons. And it was actually pretty cool. It was a nice looking building. I think they call it the temple. And there were several rooms that we had access to. We didn't have access to the second floor, but on the ground floor, uh, we could actually move quite freely. And the room where the actual party was looked to me actually like a place of worship or prayer. It looked a little bit like a church actually. There were benches and there was something like a choir area where there was um, I think an area that was two or three steps above the rest of the room just like in a church. This is where the altar normally is and they had, I don't know if they call it altar, but they had a gigantic stone uh, monument there too uh, that was kind of like a big stone table and it looked like an altar to me just naturally from my background as a catholic and um, they put a rug or tablecloth or something over the structure and uh, they just used it to put you know the cd player there and have some snacks there and arrange some soft drinks for the party so uh, we were then in this room like uh, teenagers uh, listening to britney spears music or whatever was popular at the time and i felt just weird about that because um, in a catholic church we would never have a birthday party and we would never put soft drinks or snacks on the altar. Again, I don't really know if it's just coincidence that it looks the same way, but it, it just felt like a place of prayer to me and that made me feel weird. But maybe they use this uh, place much in a different way, I don't know. But I also snuck off into the library of the lodge and that was pretty cool. They had a lot of leather bound old books in cabinets and it was a lot about the history of the lodge and the history of the city and important members of the stonemasons from the region. And I actually looked into some of these books uh, for an hour actually. <laughs> And that was quite interesting. So that was it. That was my first experience. And actually until this day also my last experience with the Freemasons. Okay, this was my little anecdote about the Freemasons in Germany. Take care. Until next time.